everybody. My name is Dr. Brooke Goldner from Goodbye Lupus. And today I wanted to do some real talk with you and maybe a little bit of story time about the real reasons that you might not be changing your diet the way you need to to meet your goals. I'm sure if you're watching this right now, you're interested in how nutrition can impact your health. Maybe you're trying to lose weight. Maybe you're trying to reverse disease and you're trying to learn everything you can. But the question is, are you doing everything you've learned? Are you taking action every day? And if so, why not? I want to help you with those things. And, and I held this up because that's the majority of the content in my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease. So if you don't know me, I myself reversed my own lupus 18 years ago now uh, using my nutrition protocol, the Goodbye Lupus Protocol. And I've helped thousands of people around the world do the same. And this protocol, we released it to the public years ago as a public service. So the exact protocol and the nutrition you need, it is out there. And yet people still struggle, even though they're sick, they want the help, but they're not doing it. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. And so while my book, Goodbye Lupus, is short, here's the foods to eat and why, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, well, I wrote a lot more because it was all about the psychological part. And my background is I'm a specialist also in trauma as well as a medical doctor. And so I help people understand the reasons that they don't take action on the things that they want most so that they can change that and actually get their health back and get their life back. And so I have used those skills so much every single day, helping people understand how to make the nutrition work for them. And that's what I do in my programs. It's why I have programs like Rapid Recovery where I work with people every day because the nutrition's simple, but keeping people doing it, keeping people consistent, helping people understand why they self-sabotage, that part is a lot harder. And that's where I get to support people. We just started a new group today and uh, somebody asked that question, what if I self-sabotage? What about if I have trauma? I said, glad you're here. We're gonna work through all of that. I'm gonna help you get better every step of the way. So I wanted to teach you today the major issues that get in people's way from actually taking action and taking them consistently, especially when it comes to food. So what are the reasons why people don't eat the food they know they should eat? So again, if you're watching this right now, my guess is you've probably heard before that certain foods you shouldn't be eating and other foods are very important to your health. And maybe you're not listening to what you've already learned. Maybe you're not taking action. Maybe you've spent money on programs and books and things and you're not doing it. And maybe you're getting frustrated with yourself. So first of all, understand you're a human. And humans, we learn by falling down. We literally learn to walk by falling down over and over again until we get our balance. So as long as you're getting up every time you fall down and you're willing to examine what you tripped over, you're on your way to better health. So let's go over some of the major issues today about why people fall down. One of the issues that I hear about all the time are traditions, right? So we don't just eat the way we do because of nutrition, sadly, right? If you look at you know, animals out in the wild, they eat the same food every day, no matter what day it is. If it's their birthday, if it's a holiday, uh, no matter what, they're eating the same food and they never complain of boredom. They're not looking for new recipes. They just eat what's good for their cells, what biologically is necessary for them, right? But humans, we have found a way to turn food into entertainment. We've found ways to turn eating into a drug high. And then we use that drug for different kinds of celebrations and get together so we can feel extra, extra high at the cost of our own body and our own health, which is why it makes it so hard to just eat for nutrition, right? I bet if we took a horse that's grazing outside and we gave him sugar every day, and then we gave him a choice between sugar and grass, there's a good chance he'd be all over that sugar, right? We've done that to ourselves to the point that, hey, we're not eating grass, but eating a salad might feel that way. So one of the issues people tell me about is traditions. I don't just eat the way I need to for my health, but what about my traditions? There's holidays coming up where I'm supposed to eat this food or that food. And so one of the things you need to do when you're trying to truly change your health is to plan for those traditions. Let's say it's a religious holiday like Hanukkah or Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate, there's foods people tend to eat in those holidays that are not healthy. And so we need to think about that and plan for that. Right now, as we're filming this, we have Thanksgiving coming up and Halloween, and people usually think about food primarily during those holidays rather than all the other fun. So the answer is to plan for the fun, plan for the meaning of the holidays, the spiritual connection, what those holidays mean to you. You can have beautiful and even more profound celebrations of your holidays when you focus on the meaning and the original need for the tradition rather than the foods you associate it with it. 
You know, it's not something to be ignored that the majority of heart, the highest level of heart attacks that people have all year long happens to be on Christmas. Why? Well, biggest reason is going to be all the foods people are eating on that day. I used to work in the hospitals on Christmas and we were just flooded with people having heart attacks. So if you really love people and want to spend time with your family, let's do it in a way where we can appreciate each other, celebrate traditions that are meaningful, and not look to food being that primary thing. And also let people know that that's what you're doing so they don't come over expecting pie and instead they're getting a fruit plate. But really discuss it with people and work towards making meaning that doesn't have to include food. Another big one that is really one of the main drivers of people's struggles is addiction. So food addiction is a real thing. And I actually usually say food addiction because when it comes to the real food, fruits and vegetables, for example, we don't get addicted to that where we just need to crave it and use it to treat our feelings. We just eat it until we're satisfied and we do well. But People are now addicted to these drug-like foods or really food-like drugs, I like to call them, that spike your dopamine levels, create intense amounts of addiction. And if you're craving something when you don't, when you're not actually hungry, if you're having a hard day and you're craving something, it's not about food. It's about addiction. So the way I help people through food addiction, well, a lot of ways. One is actually recognizing it. In our culture, people will never try to give an alcoholic a beer and say, just a little bit's okay. But if you tell someone that I'm trying to get off sugar or I'm trying to eat healthy, they often feel perfectly fine pressuring you. We'll just have a little bit. You've been so good. And so it's really important to actually be vocal about it and say, actually, I have sugar addiction and a little bit is not okay. If I have a little bit, I'm going to relapse and then I'll be eating it all day, every day. And that's bad for my health. I actually need to fully abstain from it. That's the best thing for me. So we need to start being more vocal. And if we're more vocal about it, people can understand us better and not trip us up. And we do have to treat it that way. If you have a food addiction, if you are addicted to sugar or cheese or whatever it is that you use on a hard day or in a celebration to get high, then abstinence is really important. Uh, everyone wants to moderate. But most people who, who say moderation is best don't moderate at all. They're mostly just eating junky. And if you're someone who can't just have a little, then it's important to just take it out and say, that's my drug of choice. I need to take it out of my life because every time I have it, I relapse. And I see that all the time in folks. And I help people through this, especially in my rapid recovery group. And we're working together every day on their emotional health as well as their food. Sometimes there's relapses and it's okay right? We work through it. You get back up again, but we also examine what was your trigger. So if you're working on this on your own and you continuously relapse, look at your triggers. What happens before you relapse? When someone's an alcoholic, they don't usually relapse when everything's going well. They relapse when they had a bad day at work, when they had a fight with their partner, when they're feeling depressed or anxious. And so the important thing to do is create game plans to treat those different kinds of issues, right? You need to have some kind of game plan to comfort yourself when you're having those problems. The other things people need in addiction is support, right? So when an alcoholic is having a hard day and they drive into the parking lot of a bar, what do they do? Hopefully they call their sponsor and say, hey, I'm sitting in the parking lot, I need help. So my group really provides that context or even in my private rapid recovery where they can reach out and say, I'm having a hard day, I'm sitting, literally people have written in and said, hey, I'm going, I'm looking at the drive-through right now, I need help. So having a support network is really important. So acknowledging you have the addiction, deciding on abstinence and making sure you have a support network is really important. There are other uh, support networks out there, think like Overeaters Anonymous and so on, where you might be able to find support, especially also if you have any friends or family that can support you as well to say, I need someone who's rooting me on, who's encouraging me not to do those things rather than telling me that it's okay to. When you start treating it like an addiction, it really makes a difference in terms of your ability to recover. You're also going to have to replace that high. So if normally you use you know, ice cream as a way to feel good, maybe it's time to go to get some dopamine through exercise. Maybe you need to go out with friends who make you laugh. We have to find other ways to create those positive emotions that don't require us to go anywhere near something edible. So that's just a little bit 
on a really big topic that usually requires a lot of help and support. The other thing that this kind of lends into as well is another reason people fall off their plan or fail is really about self-esteem and boundaries. So for example, people will tell me that, well, when I go out, people are criticizing me. I need more information to give them comebacks. And if you want comebacks, get my son Solomon's book, 50 Comebacks for Vegan Kids. Adults can use them too. If you just need a comeback, okay, check them out, they're awesome. But most of the time, when people are asking me that, it's not that they really need information to convince others. It's that they need help creating boundaries. So a boundary is your safety net to say, this is my person, these are my beliefs, this is what I want, and this is where I stay safe. And you're not allowed to cross into that and violate that. So if somebody is telling you, for example, oh, you're getting too skinny, The answer is not, well, being skinny is actually very healthy. And I know a doctor and she's very thin and she beat her lupus. And then I know uh, a chef who also, she got very skinny and she's very healthy. That's not the answer. The answer is a boundary to say, you know what? When you said that, it hurt my feelings. I don't like when people criticize my weight. It's not a nice thing to do. I'd appreciate it if you never did that again. That takes some self-esteem. That takes setting a boundary to say, you're violating me by criticizing me. I'm actually doing something that makes me feel good. I would appreciate support. Learning when people actually want information versus when they want to try to attack you to make themselves feel better, that's an important thing. And someone in my group once asked me for a list of reasons why she should be on my nutrition plan to take with her to Thanksgiving so that when anyone interrogated her about why she wasn't eating turkey or pie, she would have reasons. I said, absolutely not, I will not do that. Not because I don't love you, but because nobody has the right to do that to you. Are you planning to go around the table and ask like your overweight cousin why he's having a second serving of pie or your uncle who had a heart attack, why he's eating more meat when it's bad for his heart? Are you gonna let everybody else make the decisions they wanna make for their health and then do what's right for your own health? None of us have the right to do that. I don't do that to people. If someone asks for my help, I give it, but I don't just give it to someone who doesn't want it. And people don't have the right to do that to you. You will feel so much better when you can stand up for yourself. If someone says, why are you eating salad? All you have to say is, because I love it. How's the grandkids? Hey, why aren't you eating turkey? Because I don't want to. How's the grandkids? (laughs) See what I mean? You don't need to defend yourself, but that takes the self-esteem and the boundaries. And so that is something that a lot of people struggle with that I try to really help them with is developing the confidence to be able to live your life the way you want to, to take care of your health the way you want to, and not just letting other people boss you around or intimidate you. Most of the time when people are attacking you, it's because they're trying to feel better about themselves. They're eating a second piece of cake and you're eating a salad and you're making them feel bad about themselves because they feel guilty that they're not eating better. So if they can make you wrong, they'll feel better. Don't let them do that. By you doing the right thing for you, you're actually going to be a role model. If they're feeling bad about it, maybe they need to go home and feel bad about it and go, you know what? Maybe I should eat more salad. So by doing what's right for you, you help other people. And again, if you need support, it's such an important thing. That's why people even like to be in my free community smoothie shred on Facebook. It's a free support group, people all over the world who are all trying to do our protocols, a goodbye lupus protocol, hypernourishment, and they will share their recipes and share support. And I had a hard day and someone said this, and it's just nice to be in a group of people who are all eating the same way or trying to and supporting each other. Because oftentimes you might be the only weird one who's eating the way you do, you know? Uh, In my world, everyone's drinking their smoothies, but maybe in your world, they're not, not yet, right? You haven't infected them yet with it. And so having people that are part of your community can make such a big difference. I know my group, it really does because everybody's working on the same goals of health and nourishment and healing together. But you're gonna have to be willing to stand up for yourself and do the things that you wanna do for you no matter what other people say. And that does take self-esteem and the willingness to have boundaries. And if that's where you're failing, get support with that so that you can learn how to do that too. And that really is the final thing that most people need. If you can just take information and just do it, hallelujah, do it. I love it that I get tagged by people all over the place, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or Facebook of people who've either read my books or come to my free Q and A's on Wednesdays that I do live all on social media or just read my articles or any of the free content and they heal their disease. It works when you do it, it works. It's why I work so hard to spread this information. And 
if you're someone who hasn't been able to do it on your own, I'm guessing maybe one of the things I brought up today or maybe some other personal issue is the reason and you need to get help with it. There's so many other layers to it. People self-sabotage because of traumas and other issues. And again, in my book, Goodbye Autoimmune, I have a lot more in that to help people work through that. And all the information in that book came from coaching I gave other people in my rapid recovery group who were trying to work through those issues. But if you're struggling in those areas, it doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you might need more support to do it. And I think that that's something that we all need. So try to find a community, whether it's our Smoothie Shred community or a community, maybe you go on meetup.com, find other plant-based people. Maybe you find raw vegans, people who are doing what you like, or maybe even a community of people who are just more interested in health or fitness so you can start surrounding yourself. Because you know, as my husband always says, environment always wins. You have to create the environment that's going to heal you. And of course, if you need more support than that, maybe there's a therapist you need, or of course, I would love to help take care of you too, if that's what you you need. But don't try to do it all alone. All of us need a leg up sometimes. All of us need help sometimes. And if you're struggling, just know there's so many of us out there that want to see you win. You can do this. You can do this. It's just about planning, buying the right foods, and eating what you need to eat, right? That part's simple. But giving yourself permission to do it, standing up for yourself, abstaining if you're food addicted, right? And creating new traditions that make you feel just as happy or even more nourished in your soul than all of the junky foods you used to. All of those things will not only make this possible, but it will make it wonderful and it will make it a lifestyle that you're so proud of and happy that you have that you'll never want to give it up. So I hope my tips today helped you. I hope that you're having an amazing day and I hope that you do what it takes today and every day to keep going after the health and the life that you want. Again, I'm Dr. Brooke Goldner from Goodbye Lupus. I'll see you next time.